so I'm going to give you this, and I hope there's some slides on here that you are going to take us on a journey together with. Yeah. I, have you got your, yeah, you got your mic on, yeah? Can you hear me? Yeah, there we go. Um, so I guess, first of all, maybe just tell us a little bit about your background, just to kind of put everything into context. Yeah. Hang on, hang on. This crowd, this crowd are all heart, all right? Just do me a favor. Everybody make some noise for Lucy. Make her feel comfortable. Because it can be a bit intimidating standing, standing up on here, but everybody's here with you. And Maybe I'll go through, some, go through the slides first. Sure. I think we Sorry. might just give you a mic. Um, and then we can... We'll, yeah, we'll start off. We'll, start, we'll, we'll ease in with some slides, okay. and then we'll go on our journey together. So, and this was a lighthouse in Norway. How did, how did this come around? So there's the um, New Art Festival in mm -hmm. Stavanger. And normally it's all curated in the town. But for some, this lighthouse is attached to a museum down the coast. And it's a heritage site, so it's quite a big deal. They've been waiting for a few years trying to convince the locals to get it painted. And then they asked if I'd go and paint. Which was it, was, it was incredible, it was right on the coast and we were given accommodation next to like, the old lighthouse keepers. But it was a bit like, because it was just, uh, my partner and my sister decided to come, claiming they'd help me, but they just had a holiday and sat inside. Standard family. Night, and it was freezing and really windy and stormy and I was on this cherry picker getting blown about and I'd come in okay, can I have a cup of tea? And they're just busy doing other things. So they weren't helping at all. But um, it was, yeah, there was no one around, so we were just secluded. But it, down in the basement, it was occupied by the Germans, and in the basement of the tower there, there's all paintings on the wall by the, one of the chefs, and it's all of naked women in exotic hot places. It's obviously dreaming and trying to yeah, yeah. escape. It had that feel that you just wanted to, I guess the weather, it just beat you down after did you not? Did you not contemplate maybe emulating that on the side of the wall, thinking, this is, there's a good that. chance here to do a sexy naked girl hula dancing? Yeah. Maybe. How did it feel though, going in and painting a heritage building? Because it's not like you're just painting on the side of, you know, sort of like an organised wall. This is something that you're kind of taking on. Do you approach it in a different way? Do you, well, do you take on a little bit more responsibility and does it change? you know, the, the content of your work in any way? Fortunately, they hadn't told me all the stress about it before. Uh. But I thought something was up when they had a paint specialist come. Because normally, I tend to paint in just black and white because it's some way, wherever you are, you can usually find black and white. It keeps it... Because you're not wasting time trying to find the colours. It's just straightforward there. But they had this guy come and he was like, OK, so we've got to get this special paint that will be you know, sort of last few years. And I'm like, well, it doesn't matter. It can be washed off in a week. So then I should have guessed that the... And they brought us special outfits to wear in the cold. Um, Is it still there? It's still there. And actually, a lot of the... It's the first time I've had more negative comments because people were... You know, it's, it's, to them, it's a very historical site. And, they, and there's... Um, graveyard around the side and it's they didn't want it touched but then after a while it made the news everyone was complaining um, there I am running in and you know, it seemed very uncomfortable but now they absolutely love it and it's bringing more people to the area so it's all kind of it's all kind of worked I think there is there's always that fine line of kind of what you can paint on and everyone of course plays by their own rule book I mean I come from a little town just outside uh, Glasgow and uh, you know there's nothing there uh, but as Jamie always came in and painted a, a, a castle there and it was kind of like okay cool so if you're going to do it you know do it well and, yeah. and clearly that kind of that kind of worked should we see what other slides we got because we did one slide there this could be a, yeah. this could be like a super long one oh, really? <laughs> <laughs> yeah yeah you could see all the fans going oh. you guys all have water in your bags by the way so do you want to tell us a little bit about what we're seeing this just now? This was in the Marrakesh, part of the Marrakesh Biennale that we were invited to. Was it the first? We've got someone here from 
the, the organisation. I think I think they may be doing a talk tomorrow. Ah, perfect. So we did a workshop with um, up in the Atlas Mountains. How was the response there? Good. Well, the kids seemed to really enjoy it. It was good. Apart from I realised that I was painting a pipe hanging out the wall, thinking, oh, I'm making this really nice. And then moved my foot and realised I was actually painting a sewage pipe directly. <laughs> Somehow nice. Find the, hey. The spots. Oh, it's a good-looking sewage yeah. pipe. You and this know. on the roof here. So there was this like rickety ladder at the side, and then he had to go past the little corrugated hut where a man that was his house, and he slept in, and then climb onto the roof, and it was just full of these like bundles of feathers, and it turned out it was a dead eagle, owl, all sorts of things, bones, and blow it as a Witch doctor, and that was where he was just decomposing all the bodies. Standard. Yeah, so I was a bit worried about that one. Yeah. I might have got cursed. Or you made it out alive. That's <laughs> that's always a good sign. Um, did you pick up any uh, any sort of witch doctor medicines or remedies when you were there? No, but I should have done because I was pretty poorly when I came home. Yeah, well, that might the sew between the sewage pipe and that. To be honest, it was it was definitely one of them. So, how do you change kind of like how you approach a wall with regarding to the environment in which you're with? I mean, you know, is there a different way in which you approach that to say the you know the the lighthouse, or is there a men yeah. mental place you put yourself? There is in the fact because I don't plan. You know, I don't decide. Oh, I'm going to do this design on the wall because often I enjoy more letting the space dictate and, you know, sometimes the ladder won't reach to a certain point. And I've got quite obsessive with my brush marks using just one brush, you know, doing it in one take. So to be able to reach that and so it fits. I'd rather it was subtle within the environment and so it sat comfortably rather than popping out. Yeah. So I guess that challenge of just turning up and seeing how the environment dictates it, I'd rather than do it that way. Nice. So let's see what else we've got. Um, Where was this one? So I live in Birmingham, and they've just knocked down the old library, which is a Brutus building, and John Maiden's the architect, and they seem to be eradicating all of these beautiful buildings. And... I don't know, it's, it's dividing people. Mm -hmm. You either like it or you don't. And anyway, so they built this new one, and because I'd painted on the old one, then they, surprisingly, because what I painted on the old one was to try and encourage them to keep it. So I had a very negative view on this new one. But for some reason, they said, well, why don't you come and do painting in here? So these are um, permanent installation. In the How is... I was I was Birmingham. I mean, do you see a difference in kind of attitude to say, to say London or or further? Have you have you found much of a, a difference in your experience the more you go or the further away you get from Birmingham? It, well, it has different areas. So there's a some slides later on. I'll pick up on that because there's definitely some people desperately trying to push Birmingham forward, and then there's certain people in authority who just so, you, you know, the artist who painted on the floor and it would be perspectives dropping mm -hmm. back. He came, was there for an hour, and then council were like, no, go, clear off. Thanks, he came, painted some work all around, straight away cleared off. I don't know, but I, it is changing. It's getting better, so. Yeah, yeah, yeah. More aggressive people. Um, do you know, there's so many, I might just fix it. That was the, the old library. In Birmingham. In Birmingham. So I was saying that if birds are nesting, then legally you can't cut a tree down. Mm -hmm. You can't knock a bird down. So you put your protected birds on the side of that so that they can get rid of yeah. it? Okay, that makes sense. Yeah, it works, that makes yeah. sense. <laughs> Gambia. Um, okay, this is, this is an old project, but it was used on the um, press for this. And it ties in a bit with what RJ was saying as well about how... Um, you know, this thing of how artists come and then it changes the area in a way. And this was a project called um, Wide Open Walls, and they 
had the, the a guy called Lawrence and Njogu, who's a local Gambian artist. Is that the best ever one? The best ever kept did that, yeah. Mm. So we were the first year a bit of a trial run. And the idea was that if if artists came and painted in the fishing village, then the locals would be prouder, would be able to s it would it would become a tourist destination so then they could show tourists around in because a lot of the young kids were going to the beach resorts to try and make a living with the tourists there in not particularly good ways. So um, I don't know, I was really skeptical. You know, bring us in, paint stuff, and then we disappear. And it was so hot, but we had such a good welcoming. So I started painting birds around, so we just had this little trail people could follow. And as soon as we all started painting, everyone, all the villagers, were like, come and paint my house, come and paint my house. So it did completely, um, it was work, you know, you could see. Immediate effect. Yeah. And the fact that their paint is, a lot of the paint is made from crushed oyster shells, so we were leaving, bringing a lot of paint and leaving it with them so they could use it. And this guy in particular, he, so he was new to the village, didn't really know many people, and he came up to me and was like, oh, I want you to paint this on my house. And he pulled out of his pocket his key ring, and it had attached to it a bit of a sweatshirt. And it was a Grim Reaper from an Iron Maiden cover or something. He was like, I want this on my house, massive. And I was like, okay, so you're new to the village and you're trying to make friends, I'm not so sure. And then I was like, well, I couldn't even do this painting justice. You need to, like, look and ask someone else who could do it. Should have yeah, given him a couple of paints and said, look, this is for you, man. Well, this is for you. So that's what we did. And oh. he sent it in the rider's <laughs> house. Amazing. <laughs> Amazing. And then, then we did this one together, so... The two of us painted that he he was creating the river in the middle and all, you know making. It I mean, out. I can see how he made the connection, having seen birds and and trees, and then thought, well, yeah, let's get a grim reaper. Yeah, let's get a yeah. grim reaper up in there. And this is his own artwork. He was great. He, he came, suddenly came out with all these paintings he'd done, so it was really nice to leave a lot of paint with him. This is how. So imagine grim reaper. I think it was on the left. On the back wall. Have you had a, a chance to get back there? No, I haven't, but I'd love to because now it's so full. So many people have been since. Is there a place that you haven't painted but you would really like to, or is there something about a place that you're going to paint that attracts you more than others? Um, well, at the moment I've been hiding in the woods wooded area making work so that's attracting me more is that influencing that must be influencing the content and the, the, the way you attack totally. your work how have you seen it sort of veer off um, actually I've got some size later that I can show okay. you how it's probably should have probably it. should have ran through this yeah. slide presentation together before <laughs> shouldn't we <laughs> <laughs> 10 minutes ago yeah, yeah, yeah. Met, met as I was going into the toilet just before, so <laughs> we are very much freestyling this one. I put these in just because I love their drawing, so obviously it was important, I thought, to, to engage directly with the school children there. And they, so we did a self-portrait project and then they all painted it on the wall. Except one guy, you can see, he didn't draw his face, he drew a car. And we were like, don't you want to put your face? He was like, that's me. And I think this was his sort of aspiration, he was just like... A little oh, bit more conceptual than the others. <laughs> That's it. Think yeah. outside the box, man. Yeah. Just go with it. This my favourite. And then this was outside the school. So the video that you showed earlier, um, it, uh, I, I guess a lot might know Farmo Festival. There's a few people here that have been to it. And basically it's... it's young Italian guy was in a punk band, travelled the world, and was getting sick of music, so he wanted to get people to come down and paint. And because he had travelled the world, he was seeing that his friends were still staying at home, and so he thought, I'm going to bring the world to them. And he just wanted to shake up the, this town that he was living in. Um, and so I got this email out of the blue, about ten years ago, saying, 
oh, my mum's an amazing cook. She makes me cry. The food's so good. She cooks vegetarian food. Um, I've got a screen printing place. We've got duh, this, this, this. I thought this sounds too good to be true. Mm. And so, I don't know, I sort of avoided, I, don't know, I just didn't trust it. Mm. And he said, okay, come to Kamaka in northern Italy. Um, I'm going to be there with my friends with uh, Blue Arrow, Kerkane and Ethos. Come and paint with us all there and you can meet me. And we turned up and he's, he's one of the biggest jokers I've ever, ever met, always playing tricks. Was, then, was him being in northern Italy a joke? We <laughs> <laughs> landed in this tiny airport and there was no one around and the cleaners were in. And then his car turned up. We'd been waiting for like an hour. He was like, okay, yeah, I'll meet you at the airport. Car turned up. He got out with friends and just walked straight past us. I was like, can you, and just, no, 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 no. Just had us on and played this for about half an hour and then finally, I was like, oh yeah. I don't know if you want, we would want to laugh or just punch him yeah, during that. <laughs> I think there's a very fine line between those two. Nearly did punch him. He's a big boy. Yeah. Th- those uh, Irish lads, eh? <laughs> when he was coming to Oh, speak of the devil. <laughs> <laughs> when he was coming to be picked up from the airport, and he obviously had never met Andrew before. And Andrew started going, I want you, I want you, cigarette, cigarette. And was trying to go in his bag and pickpocket. And God was just like, who's this guy hassling me? And to the point where he turned around and was like, what are you doing? Shit. So, yeah, yeah. So anyway, so Italian he, humor, eh? Yeah. So he did an amazing festival, lasted for ten years. Then he, I guess, the challenge of disrupting his town turned around, and everyone wanted. We were handing him all, saying, "Come and paint this," you know. Get, and so it sort of lost its battle, mm. um, and it was all becoming long reason. Reasons he's very. DIY and anti-commercial, and, you know. So he did a last show here last year called Catastrophe. And I went a few months before and spent some time amongst the trees. As you do. As you do. Because in Puglia, the olive trees are all, they've got a bacteria, like a fastidiosa or something, that's killing them all. So they're 100 years old and they're all dying off. So I took transferred from the trees the textures and then created these canvas works from it. And then while I was there, did some painting. Oh, okay, we've gone. So that obviously had a big influence and effect on, you know, how you approached it. So that's totally because. I wasn't sure what to do for, you know, he was trying to wrap up, sum up this whole 10 years of the festival in mm. this show. And, yeah, so I thought if I'd go in and I can just see what... Can you still get excited just going over to, say, just just to paint a mural yeah. that's for... So, to say, so you can still get that same kind of buzz, even if you know that you're not just in the heart of Gambia or if you're doing something, you know that's at the tail end of a you know huge project do you still get that same buzz yeah and especially hanging around with him because like the, these were just little ones for fun we were doing and he's like come here come here let's do this one let's be sneaky and he'd be looking out so it felt like your kids again being naughty <laughs> um, where was this this is in birmingham this was just a couple of weeks ago and there's not many legal sites for graffiti in birmingham so they're trying to instigate this one stretch of a canal how do you feel about how do you feel about the the legal side of things? Do you think it's there should be more? Yeah, because if you're gonna go and do it and enjoy it, you don't wanna get it stopped halfway. It's nice to be able to just give everyone that opportunity. Mm. I like this one in particular. So is the response generally quite positive then in, 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 in Birmingham when you're painting there? I mean, they must be a little bit more desensitised to, to it than, yeah. say, Gambia. Yeah, totally. People don't really look. Tend not to bother but as much. I was painting once in um, opposite block of flats and the police came, they were called. I said, uh, a police woman came out and said, we've uh, had a complaint of vandalism uh, from someone up in those flats, but uh, I can see you just painting. 
so and I was like, yeah, it's just yeah. a community project in progress. Like, I'll leave you to finish. Okay. What's the worst um, response you've ever had to your work? Do you know, just to keep it positive. <laughs> using a paintbrush, people don't tend to view as threatening, mm. I've found. Yeah. So I, I had this woman come and chat. This was somewhere in London, and she came and chatted to me for ages saying, oh, I really like what you're doing. You know, you're using a paintbrush, not like those boys with, with spray cans. And I was like, what a weird yeah. view to, you know, should really... Do you think there was maybe, it was just the, the idea of the can of spray paint being viewed in a negative way, or do you think there might have been some degree of environmental background. I mean, I think spray paint as a tool is looked at in a more negative context than, yeah. than brushes. Yeah, you know, people associate it with graffiti. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Okay, so this is an attitude some cities have. Of, and I don't, I'm, I love Birmingham, that's why I live there, so I'm not going to be too negative. Don't want to be but fair. <laughs> we want fair, yeah. open comments today. So, the, I've painted these two concrete pillars that are basically the gateway into the gay village and the Chinese quarter. So possibly, you know, the most colourful part of town. Mm -hmm. And not that I did anything colourful, black and white, but um, they started painting over it and they decided that... Who, sorry, who are they? The council. And they did a little test, like summer grey, winter grey, dark grey. <laughs> and they, had, they cut off the whole road, they got loads of clothes in, put plastic sheets around it, did a base coat, and then went for just a mid-tone grey. Oh, <laughs> it's a little bit too adventurous, that one. A little and bit yeah, too spicy. You know, they could have done... You can just colour it like red or I don't know, you know? No, that'd be too garish. Yeah. Um, so this is sort of what we were talking about with hoardings, because it's... How do you feel about hoardings? Well, for me, they're funny. They're a kind of, they're a funny one for a lot of people as well. Yeah. You know. And it's the two sides of whether you're glitzing up someone's sort of real estate and they want it to look or you're just doing something that, like a lot of these ones in Birmingham, they all boarded up, put the bulldozers behind, and then of course nothing happens for so long, mm -hmm. and then hoardings are just falling down. So I just use them as to do fun things, and then people leave little messages on them, which I thought was quite nice. Do you feel your work kind of, uh, do you see people interact that way with your work much? Writing messages is obviously kind of a random one. I mean, yeah. have, is there any cases where you've seen people interact with your work in a way that you wouldn't have initially expected? Well, only one, one I don't know, it's a bit of a silly one to say maybe, but there was, I literally just finished painting, stepped away, and then saw this guy come up and do his thing over the top. So I went up and I was like, so how come, like what made you choose this patch in particular? And then sort of was <laughs> like, oh, it makes it a cool backdrop. And I was like, oh, fair enough. <laughs> like I fair enough. A clean background for him. Cool lab. Um, okay, so this is where I'm spending my time. Taking canvases and a sledge full of my paint and brushes and picking up the textures. And this was, there's a, a new art gallery also. They wanted me to paint a mural on the wall for a group show. Mm -hmm. But it just didn't excite me going in and painting directly onto the wall. So I emailed saying, how about I do some large canvas works? And I didn't hear back and I thought, well, that must mean I, that's fine. Mm. The curator had been away on holiday. So the day she got back, I was already doing this, and she was like, "Well, wow, how are we gonna how are we gonna get them on the wall?" But they had an amazing technician, the technicians there, and they stretched up the three canvases nine meters by three meters each, and it was this mammoth job, okay, just hoisting them up. Did you have you had a couple? Of, did you have some hands on that one? 
there was like four guys having to physically stretch. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, it's a big I job. I felt useless. I was just sort of watching. Conduct the orchestra. <laughs> yeah. Um, they're the stretchers behind. So they built them all in the gallery. So I basically, there's two parts. So the, the woods where I was picking the textures, that's all being regenerated. And so is the parts in town where I was picking up all the um, pavement and walls. So I was looking at more how it's all disappearing, so I was trying to capture it and hold it in time there. And then at the same time, a friend of mine passed away, so it became this whole thing about memory, you know, this we haven't forgotten you. It's Suddenly took a new life. Yeah. How long did that stay there for? For the month. Do you want to talk about found objects? Mm, no, I think I've got so many pictures there. That's okay. Do you want to call it there? Yeah. All right. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, Lucy McLaughlin. So, hopefully, our other two guys are still around. If you can welcome back to the stage.